uh, if we continue on with our survey and we go into package managers, this is uh, how you get and install software on uh, on Unix. Uh, I should say on Linux or that um, there are a variety of choices. The two main choices that, that there seem to be that, that seem to follow this sort of this package the, the, the package management uh, are RPM which is Red Hat uh, and Fedora and then there is Deb, D-E-B which follows the Debian platform of which Ubuntu, Kubuntu fall on the Debian platform line. Now, again, the there is a split between the two different desktops, and I should inform you that G, uh, G, GTK, and you also often see it as GTK, and there's a plus symbol after it, uh, is connected to the GNOME desktop. That's is part of the GNOME desktop environment, and that KDE is supposed to have its own thing. KDE is is known as it has a has a a a, a similar thing uh, called QT. Uh, QT is the QuickTime. That's that's sort of the windowing and that's sort of the development environment that it was based off of. Uh, and so you uh, when you work in uh, in KDE. Uh, you use uh, either a QuickTime uh, IDE uh, in terms of development environment or something along the QT uh, environment, uh, the QT environment uh, development kits. So, and that could, the, what I, my choice was uh, Monkey Studio. Monkey Studio does uh, a good uh, job at pulling everything together. But I found that the uh, IDE, you can't do everything in one IDE package. You have to, I've created a whole desktop uh, that does the IDE for me, and it includes several different compilers. This includes NetBeans, Eclipse, uh, Monkey Studio, and a couple others. Uh, but back to the main thing about uh, the package management. Uh, package management uh, brings up a whole new host of problems. One, you have to make sure that all the dependencies are satisfied uh, within the package so that as you install it, uh, and this is what I've noticed uh, that where, again, if there isn't a proper bug tracking or, or a survey done, and the person hasn't properly surveyed the environment, they're unaware of problems that could pop up that could affect the installation on certain machines. Uh, I'll give an example. Uh, I use a program called Miro. It is a GTK program that runs also as well on the uh, KDE platform, even though it's even though it's a known product. And there's no, there was no issues until recently uh, it, it, installing it. Uh, I, uh, the package manager that I use, I, I'd taken off uh, Muon because Muon uh, was uh, very buggy, and when it crashed, it literally hung the entire system. So I was, and this is what, this is one of the things that Linux allows you to do, even though you're on a KDE platform, and, and Muon is the choice for the KDE platform. I prefer. Um, Synaptic as as my package manager to do the, do uh, software installation, and what I've done is I've replaced uh, Muon with Synaptic. So I got a notification that uh, this program Miro uh, was going to install an update. So I ran it, and uh, it, as soon as I clicked I had to, to do it. Uh, it says package broken. It couldn't install, and it said th there are missing dependencies. But it didn't say what the missing dependencies were. It couldn't find where the break was. So even when a package manager is good, like Synaptic, there are particular limitations, and this has to do with 
uh, more to do with the packager, of the, uh, the, the person maintaining the package. And these are people on Launchpad uh, who do this. Who, if they haven't done a proper survey of what the, problem, the, the possible problems could, could be, then what they put out is not going to be, well, where it may work on their machine, it may not successfully upgrade on somebody else's machine. And this, this is where, where, where some of the complexities come in, is that you can never assume that your machine is configured, configured exactly the same way that other machines are, and that other machines' con configurations will accept things that you want to do on there, or, you know, or, or the packages. And this is where what are called backwards compatibility uh, needs to come in. While there is a desire to use the latest and greatest, any software that is that are of any quality needs to consider at least three generations back, three versions back uh, than it's using. I'll give an example. Uh, the, uh, the 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 newest version of um, the newest version of uh, DSSI VST. This allows uh, uh, software uh, sound effects that run on Windows to run on Linux. When it upgrades it, it also upgrades a package called Wine. Wine is the uh, one of the features that uh, Linux has where it can emulate or imitate a particular computer environment. Wine is um, Linux's imitation of Microsoft's, Microsoft's Windows environment. So if you have a Wine package on your, your Linux machine, you can emulate and run, emulate the Windows environment and run Windows programs in there. And what a lot of the sound stuff, the sound uh, 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 programs do, particularly if you're running uh, a MIDI program or uh, 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 this is the Linux Music Studio it does, it takes uh, sound effects and, and that are all that not only from the Linux platform but from the Microsoft platform as well. So it allows you to use a whole variety of things. But when one of the effects was, was supposed to be updated. They were supposed to, again, these pa packages, the DSSI package that, that brought in the, the uh, Microsoft's VST uh, uh, sound effects is developed by a separate, per separate person from the person who develops uh, the uh, Linux Music Studio. DSSI uh, uh, VST upgraded, was supposed to be upgraded, and it pulled off when you and if you just bl blindly click on it and, and, and say yes, upgrade it, and this is where you have to be careful with the upgrades. What it will do is it will pull off the old Wine package, which is uh, one, uh, Wine 1.2 now, and install a new Wine package known as 1.3. The one, the 1 1.3 uh, package, right? Even though they're developed by the same people. The 1.3 package is not backwards compatible with the 1.2, and this is where you know. And this is the same thing with Miro. Miro, when it, it went to upgrade, my suspicions are is that it's not compatible with some of the with, with some of the new upgrades it, it, that have occur, occurred with uh, with uh, the move to 11.10 uh, uh, on uh, on Ubuntu that these upgrades have not occurred yet in a lot of the main channels. There are upgrades uh, where Ubuntu and Kubuntu upgrades uh, every six months in April and October respectively. Uh, many distributions only upgrade once a year in April. So if an upgrade hasn't occurred for a particular package and the package is aimed across all, supposedly aimed across all Linux packages, then what happens is if the machine hasn't been properly upgraded or there are packages missing or the, 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 the different configurations, then when you go to upgrade, that upgrade is going to fail and crash the, uh, the original, uh, uh, the, the original um, install of that package. 
And so the only way to do that is to, is to, to sort of back out of that problem is to uninstall the program and wait for a new package or build a package on your own. And this is sort of where my sort of my um, thinking is going along is that uh, I will start uh, bringing some of this uh, sur surveying work and some of, some of these ideas of backwards compatibility into the various environments and the various programs as I get more involved. Um, so I have set up a Launchpad account. I do have my own Launchpad account now. Uh, I've, I've signed the agreements uh, that sort of uh, states I'll be a good person and, and not do anything bad. Uh, I've put up some security keys, although once again in this environment I find the security keys uh, with the Ubuntu Kubuntu servers to be very buggy. Uh, buggy to the point where uh, if you're using a Kubuntu server or a Ubuntu server uh, to generate keys, more often than not, that key generation will fail. If you use uh, something like uh, Enigma, which is on the Thunderbird, is, is a, key pro a key management program on, on Thunderbird that uses an MIT uh, key server, the key server there is more likely or not to succeed. And so the way I've done all my keys is not through um, Ubuntu's key server, but through MIT's key server. And because it provides a public key to all the server environments, as it creates on MIT, uh, the Ubuntu and Kubuntu servers pick up these keys and sort of publish it to, to their sites so that these key servers are all in sync. But I find that when, when, you, when you're working with packages, that very often uh, Kubuntu and Ubuntu will drop, the, 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 uh, the, the key management, uh, pa the, the, the key management drops the keys, that, there's a, that somehow something goes wrong and the keys cannot be resolved between the two different uh, servers, between the two different systems, between the one that, that your your system that, that you want to bring a uh, software onto, and the server that, that, that has the uh, software on it, but is protected by a key. And says, so, oh well, these keys don't match uh, because they don't match. You you have the uh, you're going to be un installing unsigned and untrusted uh, software packages. And it's it. it it's supposed to be, if, if, if it's done right, you're supposed to be going, be able to manage the servers you're going on to and not be shunted off onto a, a random uh, mirror server that could have been hacked. So uh, on my end, on the, on, on the, uh, 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 the downloader side of the, of the equation, it's not my fault if a key is not managed and maintained properly on the server side. And I find is that this is that I found the problem seems to be on the Ubuntu Kubuntu server side. This is where the key failure seems to be. This is not resolved in uh, Synaptic. Uh, and my suspicion is that you're going to have to go into the logs and see where the failures are there and do more. Uh, this is what I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing a log survey, going into all the different various logs within Linux and seeing what they say, how they're laid out, uh, what type of information is in there. And then from there, uh, uh, bringing that back out and into a better bug survey. Then this is where uh, I'll have to sort of upgrade some of my accounts that I have. I have accounts with uh, 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 KDE, I have accounts with GNOME, uh, and I have accounts with the groups who do X. The X.